had two phases, actually I had three phases to it. The first phase was that we would do the, uh, the agenda setting part, where, when they actually prepare the manifestos, compile issues that we thought were long term, because sometimes the parties don't want to confront long term issues, they want the quick wins. But we know that to get transformation, economic transformation, social economic transformation, you need to build on something for a long time. And then get them to look at these things and check whether or not, in the second phase, whether or not they've done that. And this was the second phase. So we had already published one where we, we showed all the issues in 10 sectors. This was taking a few sectors and assessing what the parties have put down for in terms of their feasibility, in terms of their relevance, and so on and so forth. Um, because the big issue for some of these places, apart from the fact that some of it focused too much on inputs, is the cost. Because we just, the economy we have, that has so much constraints, uh, and we already have a, a, a debt challenge that we are trying to. So if you promise all these things and you look at your resource envelope, it's very difficult to imagine that we'll be able to do them. And we need to pay attention to that because after a while, people then lose interest or lose belief in the, in the political process that all these campaign promises and all of that, they don't mean anything. So we're just trying to bring some realism into it. Also, it's not just the politicians, the citizens themselves that also have to understand that we can't get everything. There's a trade-off. If you spend 2.4 billion Ghana cities on free SHS, you are going to have challenges with basic education. And as Kofi Asai was pointing out, construction for basic schools and stuff have reduced because the inputs have all gone to free SHS. But you need a foundation to be able to get a, a strong free SHS. So we need to look at these things because the outcomes is going to impact on our development. The quality of the, the skilled you know, labor that we, we have. All of those things will become relevant. So those are the things that in doing this is to bring a dose of realism a little bit for both politicians but also citizens. And going forward, whoever wins and goes into government, we still are able to track these things and say, you know, okay, fine. You may not have understood and appreciated what was there. Now you are there, you need to adjust your policy because it, it will not be, you will not be able to implement it. And sometimes when they get to government, it becomes difficult because your, your opponent will say, ah, you said you're going to do it, do it. And if you do it and it wrecks the economy, uh, we all suffer. So we, we, I think citizens just need to take an interest in these processes. And we are hoping that by instigating this, we are able to begin to pay more attention to these uh, value chain of, of development, these policy processes, where it starts from and how it ends.